I'm probably gonna catch some heat for this. What's going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode on my channel. As always, I'm Jay and today guys, I'm finally talking about one of my most anticipated films of 2020, but a year later in 2021 and about two, three weeks shy probably uh, from the time that it's actually been released. And that is Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. But long story short guys, I'm gonna be delving into some spoiler territory with this film. So if you haven't seen it and you know you want to, go check it out first, then come back. But if you have seen the film already, or if spoilers just don't bug you, let's talk. Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. So as the title suggests, this film is solely about Snake Eyes, and it is an origins tale as we see him kind of coming into his own as the Arashikage icon badass G.I. Joe member that we know him to be. And again, this is part one of what I would assume is a trilogy which fleshes out the character and gives him that full kind of Snake Eyes birth by having him go through the different trials and tribulations that he will to eventually become the guy we know. First off, right off the bat, the thing is is that this story was very unique in that even though he's the main character and you would think he's the hero, He's not very heroic because the story centers around him um, actually doing some pretty bad stuff. Like, not terribly bad, but definitely deceptive in the manner of him actually being brought in by the Arashikage clan after saving Tommy Arashikage, who would later become Storm Shadow, if any of you guys know about the lore. And the thing about it is, is that they're showing him the ways of, of the Arashikage clan, the secrets, uh, the philosophies they're teaching him, taking him in, and showing him the ways of honor. But really what he's doing is being a double agent slash plant, because he's actually working with a Yakuza, who's helping him try and get revenge by finding the man who killed his father when he was a boy, which we see at the beginning of the film. And I gotta say, I thought this was definitely an interesting take, uh, for sure, because I was ready to come in here and actually see, like, a good heroic type of guy and everything, which I still kind of got. But the thing is, is that that heroicness was overshadowed by the fact that he was really just trying to get close so that way he could actually infiltrate and be a thief and actually steal something of a MacGuffin in this film for the opposition, the evil people, who just so happened to be working with the Baroness and the Cobra organization. So... The thing about it is that I was definitely very excited because the best parts of the first two films, as mixed as they were, critically and audience-wise, were the ninjas Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, and Snake Eyes is my favorite character out of the G.I. Joe foray. And the more and more I get to know the character, the more and more I just see that he's kind of like background dressing, depending on what iteration you're watching. Like, the cartoons really just have him kind of in the background being kind of that cool badass, just not really talking or doing too, too much. Although he did get into a lot of different uh, messes with uh, Shipwreck and some other crew members of the G.I. Joe, um, uh, you know, organization, as it were. Um, and it definitely ensued into some hilarious moments, if I do say so myself. But getting back to this film, it really grounds things and takes things into a more serious tone because it actually updates his... Um, origin for a more contemporary audience. Incidentally enough, they actually brought on Larry Hama to write and kind of be a creative kind of um, partner on this, an advisor. And the thing about it is, is that Larry Hama is the scribe, is the dude of the G.I. Joe kind of origins and everything. So, you know, a lot of stuff he had his fingerprints and hands on as far as creating the characters and everything like that and having some really awesome kind of um, story and background and everything like that. And I think that the changes that they made um, although somewhat drastic in some areas, definitely did help to enhance the film and contemporize it more for today's audiences. Henry Golding, I think he did a very good job as Snake Eyes. Um, again, casting Henry Golding, you're getting a face man. He's not just going to sit in the background and not talk. He's going to do um, a lot of acting. He's not just going to pantomime like Ray Park did in the past two films. Um, but I didn't think it was that bad. And again, treating this like an origin film, he's not quite there as Snake Eyes. He doesn't even have the damn suit that we recognize until like the very end of the film. Kind of like what they did in the Tomb Raider film where she had her two guns. Andrew Koji, I've been a fan of since the Warrior series. He can bring it on the action scenes. He's a badass actor and he just oozes action charisma and awesomeness from my perspective. So having him in this film was definitely a high point and something that I was really looking forward to and he did not disappoint. And I can't wait to see what he does when he really messes stuff up in the coming sequels, if we get sequels, of course, as Storm Shadow. Because I know it's going to be, you know, havoc, to say the least. Then you had... Samara Weaving in here as um, Scarlet, which I think is really cool because it's almost like Scarlet and Snake Eyes kind of have this kind of romance or this kind of bond between them. 
in a lot of the different iterations of G.I. Joe. And the thing is, is that I thought that was a very cool and unique way of introducing him into the realm of G.I. Joe to have Scarlet kind of come through a sister Rashikage and then also have her be his end to the larger G.I. Joe universe, which is perfect. And it and keeps that little bit of uh, that relationship intact, which I thought was really awesome. And I thought Samara Weaving looked amazing as Scarlet. I think she looks great. Um, and the person that they got to play the Baroness in here, I thought she was fantastic as well. Unfortunately, I can't remember her name, and forgive me, I'm sorry, you were great in the film. Um, and I liked the uh, interplay between her and uh, Scarlet because you can tell there's a lot more beneath the surface there that they've had a lot of uh, scuffles and skirmishes between the two groups outside of this little story that we're having, which I really thought was awesome. Getting to the um, action scenes, I thought the action was fantastic. They did a lot of practical stuff. They really didn't rely too much on CGI, and I thought it was all the better for it. As far as this film goes, um, some people have complained about shaky cam, but I tell you what, this camera shaking movement here, this stuff is nothing compared to the worst film for that, which is The Bourne Ultimatum. As far as the visuals, I think the locales and the visuals and the aesthetics of the film were really awesome. It actually kind of reminded me of the Wolverine film, uh, directed by James Mangold to a degree because it was again in Japan had that kind of Japanese kind of atmosphere. I liked the compound. I liked the, the design for the compound for the Rush Kage. And I also liked the little scenes where they had the, the kind of the neon nightlife and the rain and everything for some of the fighting and little scenes like that in the film as well, which I thought really served a, a great purpose. So overall, between the characters, the story, the visuals, and everything of this film, I actually had a fun time with it. And I know a lot of people would criticize this film and say that it's not as good as some other films and everything. Uh, for example, the flick pick, he said, if you want to go watch a better Ninja Origin story, go check out Batman Begins, which... I do agree with, but in terms of this film, I think that this film did a very good job. And for the G.I. Joe franchise, this is easily the best film. Now, if you're a fan of the nostalgic, you know, G.I. Joe series, whether it's comics, cartoons, whatever, you might have a little bit of a problem with this just because of the changes that are being made. And I chalk that up to be the contemporization of the character and also the fact that, again, Hollywood likes to make these films that are origin films where we don't quite get the character that we know and love just yet. But it's building to it and it can work depending on your mindset and your perspective on it. I could easily see this being part of a trilogy, depending on the box office, depending on the success, depending on the fans and the audience reaction. Um, but I would definitely recommend going and checking this film out no matter what. If you are a fan of G.I. Joe, if you're not a fan of G.I. Joe, if you're a fan of action. So go check it out. And uh, guys, that's about all the time that I have for my review for today. So thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you dug the video. And if you are subscribed, hit that bell button. That way you never miss a moment of my content. But until next time, guys, as always, I'm Jay. So take care. And bye.